story published in The Hill this week warns that if Democrats nominate Joe Biden, they could be repeating the same mistakes that doomed Hillary Clinton in 2016. Joining us now to discuss this is author of that piece, The Hill's national correspondent, Reed Wilson. Reed, always great to see you. Always have excellent analysis. Thanks do for joining us. I do what I can. Oh, all right. So, Reed, tell us a little bit about this. History is not on Biden's side. What are the parallels that you're seeing within his campaign? So, first of all, the Democratic Party doesn't tend to nominate candidates who have run before. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, of course, the exception was Hillary Clinton back in 2016. But by and large, in the last 100 years, they've only nominated six people who have run uh, and lost a, a Democratic nomination prior to that. Wow. Of those six people, let's discount one of them, Adelaide Stevenson. Yeah, was, uh, my immediate. He won both right. times, yeah. right? So, uh, but of the other five, mm -hmm. all five of them lost the subsequent general election to a Republican candidate. Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, Hubert Humphrey, George McGovern, and John W. Davis. Of course, you yes. remember his campaign yes. back in 1924. Uh, but uh, the, the Democratic Party, when it has nominated somebody who has been sort of a creature of the establishment or been around politics for a long time, they tend not to do well in a general election. Now, there's, I think, a part of that, uh, a parallel to that, is the Democrats who have won. Consider the last three Democratic presidents, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, yes. all young, all outsiders, and all offering something new and different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part of why those sort of rerun candidates don't succeed. Americans hate Washington. They hate our leaders. They don't like Congress. They don't like anybody who's in politics. So why, are, why is one party considering offering up somebody who's been in Washington literally longer than one of the other leading candidates, Pete Buttigieg, has been alive? Yeah, that's a great point, Reed. And yet, you've spent time out on the campaign trail. What do these Biden voters tell you? What you do know, they like about him? I, yeah. I, they, they, like his, they like stability, and they like the idea of somebody being able to work the levers of government mm -hmm. on day one. Now, that's a great talking point, and we heard that talking point from Hillary Clinton back in 2016. Remember, Hillary Clinton was the most experienced candidate who had ever been nominated for president, which wasn't really true because George H.W. Bush <laughs> yeah. had been there. But if you want to talk about the most experienced yeah. candidate, well, Joe Biden is 10 times as experienced as Hillary Clinton. He chaired the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He chaired the Judiciary Committee. Of course, he served eight years as vice president. What more could you want on a resume? The bottom line, though, is that's Washington of the past. Voters don't want to go back to Washington of the past. No. They want to change Washington. So right what, are the fund what are the fundamentals? What, what is there, what's the counter argument to yours? What do you, is there a path? And here's the other thing. Is it the path? to the nomination for Biden, which could lead him to the win, which could also lead him to a loss in the general election. As in, does that electability kind of keep him safe enough within the primary to win the nomination, but then lose in the general? What do you think? Uh, I think the electability argument yeah. looks really good for Joe Biden now. Consider uh, Fox News put out a couple of polls uh, oh, last week all the way up the that, that yeah. have Biden leading in Wisconsin, which is a critical state mm -hmm. for Democrats to, to win, uh, leading by a wider margin than every other one of his candidates. We've seen that in state after state after state. Uh, Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia, you know, all of the key swing states, Biden is yeah. doing better than every other Democrat. He's also better known than every other yes. Democrat. And I think that's a little bit of what's keeping mm -hmm. some of the other candidates back. Who is going to learn something new about Joe Biden that's going to get them uh, onto his team? Uh, there aren't many people who no. don't have a right. formed opinion, just like there aren't the, that many people who have, don't have a formed opinion of President Trump. So and I think he enters a general election with a higher floor, but maybe a lower ceiling. And that's, that was the same problem with Hillary, right? Yep. Everybody in America in 2016 had an opinion on Hillary Clinton. And as we take a look at the gr critical group of voters who actually won President Trump the election, was the group who saw both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton in an unfavorable light. Right. And there were, and my old joke was, yeah. the, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party nominated the least popular uh, presidential nominee in sure. modern history, and had they nominated somebody else, I would have been saying the Democratic Party yeah. nominated the least popular uh, nominee in modern history. But of those people who, who disapproved of both Trump and Clinton, the vast majority, or close to 70 percent, chose President Trump wow. uh, over Hillary Clinton in 2016. That tells me they went with the devil they didn't know rather than the devil they knew. And one wonders, how, how does Joe Biden position himself as an outsider? And in modern presidential history, the outsider candidate almost always wins, right. the lone exception, George H.W. Bush winning Ronald Reagan. And that's the fascinating thing, right, which is that Trump is the 
president of the United States, but he is still kind of an outsider to the yeah. political system. He has governed that way. That's how his administration is. A lot of his ideas, a lot of that is still counter to the very city which he has presided now over three years. And yeah. yet the, the, that is resonating with and, Well, consider the message that President Trump has and most of the Democratic uh, uh, field has. President Trump wants to drain the swamp, wants to blow everything up right. and, and change the system. That's kind of what Elizabeth Warren wants to do yeah. in obviously a and very Bernie. different way. Right. And Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. Joe Biden is the lone candidate promising to go back to an earlier time, and I'm not sure that's a winning strategy for the Democratic Party when voters have showed right. over and over they want change. So what what could pop, are the other candidates seizing upon this? We've seen the first kind of shots across the bow at Biden from Bernie Sanders. Yeah. I have kind of contend that it's a little bit too little too late. We've got 24 days to the Iowa caucuses. Uh, do you think that there's enough time in this race for them to prosecute that Biden is unelectable? Oh, a hundred percent. Yes, and and one other bit of yeah. history too in in modern history the sort of the Iowa New Hampshire era of mm -hmm. presidential politics uh, the Democratic nominee has won Iowa or New Hampshire uh, with only one exception and that was Bill Clinton in 1992 but every other time uh, the the eventual nominee has won one of those two I don't think Biden's gonna win either of those two early states uh, barring a, a massive uh, uh, shift and what we see is that the moment that the true power of those early states is not the delegates they're gonna send to the Milwaukee convention mm -hmm. it's the momentum that they're going to provide to whichever candidate ends it's up the winning. media coverage. Yeah. Now, once we get to Super Tuesday, uh, Joe Biden is better known than every other candidate. He should do very well in this massive block of delegates. But there's something standing in his way, and that something is the $183 million that Michael Bloomberg has spent on television right. uh, over the last, just the last six, seven weeks. So uh, is Biden going to be able to capitalize on his name recognition? Yeah. Maybe not in the face of what's going to be three or $400 million by the time we get there. Let me make one counter argument Please. for Joe Biden. History may not matter in the era of Trump. Mm -hmm. And in talking to a lot of Biden fans, they're saying, like, consider political science here. I mean, we're trying to make a determination based on a data set of, what, 50, 50 data right. points. So it's not exactly, you know, the margin of error is very high. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Joe Biden may be the most electable candidate. Any uh, Democratic nominee is going to have a bajillion dollars in the bank the moment he or she right. secures the nomination. So Biden may be the one to buck this history. Have even knows President Trump bucked a lot of his own history mm -hmm. to win the Republican nomination and eventually the White House. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us, Reed. Always fascinating analysis, really good. You got Thanks. it. All right, we will have more rising for you right after this.